the Dallas Mavericks get a clutch statement win over the Minnesota Timberwolves on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. Their two stars turned it on when it mattered in the fourth quarter, Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. Kyrie Irving actually turned it on a little bit earlier in the third quarter and really did his thing, but he sealed the game for the Mavs, finished with 35 points, five assists, and four rebounds. Luka finished the game with 24 points, nine assists, and eight rebounds. He had a pretty strong start to the game, and then he went down with an injury at halftime. I didn't know if he was going to come back, but he ended up coming back having a decent second half, but a really good end to the game. He hit a clutch three from well beyond the arc and then let Minnesota know about it, um, telling him that this is what he does. Uh, P.J. Washington, second game in a row of a really good productive game from P.J., 17 points, eight rebounds, three assists. He had a clutch rebound that I thought was, was really good, just digging it out. Daniel Gafford, look, I, I hyped up Daniel Gafford earlier today. I made a nice little uh, rant video about him, and then he comes out and he has 14 points. He didn't rebound the ball extremely well, but he put the ball in the basket. You see that number right there? That's actually not 10%. That's 100% from the field. He did not miss a shot tonight. Derek Lively closed the game. He was the closer for the Mavs. Uh, again, he played more minutes than, than Daniel Gafford. He didn't have a lot of shots tonight. He had five points. He had nine rebounds, and a lot of those, the big chunk of those, were offensive rebounds, which is just something that Derek Lively brings to this team that nobody else can. Najee Marshall closed the game in the final seconds, actually, over Derek Lively because they wanted to put him on Anthony Edwards. He forced Anthony Edwards into a clutch turnover, and then he sealed the game with two free throws he kind of did his you know Najee Marshall thing he, he mucked the game up a little bit he didn't shoot the ball extremely well he didn't show a lot on offense but four points three rebounds three assists you know I think he's getting more and more comfortable in this Mavs system Clay Thompson worst game as a Maverick so far seven points you know, I don't think he did anything really bad. He wasn't a negative by any means, but he wasn't the Klay Thompson that we saw in the first three games. I think Minnesota defended him really well. They were really focused on him in the perimeter. And you know what? It's okay. This team is built to where Klay doesn't have to score 20 points per game every single night. And, you know... It's okay. Well, he'll be all right. Because you also got some minutes from Quentin Grimes. 12 minutes, nine points. His shot looked amazing. I really liked what I saw from him defensively. And just to have that guy off the bench that can come in and give you some quick buckets. Like, you know, some nights he might play 12 minutes. Some nights he might play 24 minutes. Whatever it is, you got to see him do his thing. And he did it tonight. I really like the Quentin Grimes minutes. Dinwiddie didn't have the same game he had. Hardy played a little bit. He didn't look amazing. But Overall, this is a really, really good win for the Dallas Mavericks. Second night of a back-to-back -back against the team that you just faced in the conference finals and who a lot of people are picking to be in the conference finals over the Dallas Mavericks. So you come in, again, second night of a back-to-back, -back, a fully healthy Minnesota team against a mostly healthy Mavericks team, but they are missing two players in Dante X and the Maxi Kleba, and then you dig out a win in the clutch. That says a lot about who I think the Mavericks are going to be the rest of this year. So really proud of the Mavs and uh, looking forward to the next game.